Hi, my name is Derek Van Sonder and you're watching a dev vlog for our game called Robots Can't Jump or Bayside Games. So we left off on the last tutorial and we really weren't seeing anything when we ran the game. So although our code looks right at first glance, um, as often is the case with code, it's not working correctly and there is some deeper problems. So what we were expecting to see is a little billboard drawn at the center of the origin of the world here where all these little lines intersect over there but we're not getting it so let's go and do some investigation first of all it looks like we have a bit of a memory leak but that's a fairly minor issue we'll try and get the thing to run first so I was just reading through this code a little bit um, before I started making this video and I've noticed that there's a few things that we need to fix um, as you can see here we're setting up a view space origin and we're drawing quad lists and so on and so we're using a view space technique but we're not actually submitting our vertices in view space um, because we're using the wrong function. We should have been using IWGX set vert stream view space. So let's try that out and see if that helps a little bit. So we were submitting verts in the wrong space. I'm not even sure. I believe um, those verts would have been submitted in a model space. So immediately you can see we're getting something now. There's definitely a little quad being drawn at the origin over there. And that's actually looking really good. So that's exactly what I wanted. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to start um, texturing that quad and putting some blending onto it and maybe getting rid of that memory leak too. So that's really good. So we're making progress. Um, we have we have one of our particles working anyway. Now, the next thing I'd like to do is to give these some normals. Uh, pardon me, not normals. Um, I'd like to actually give these particles um, a UV stream so that we can texture them. And that's um, quite straightforward. Um, we're going to use a similar approach to what we did with the quadverts. We're going to declare another little sort of template. And these are going to be VEC2s because you only have one UV pair per vert. So we're going to call these my quad UVs. And they're very similar. We just have two floats instead of three. So for each vertex, there's a UV coordinate pair. So what we actually wanted to do is have four of these, I just realized, not two. It's a little bit off there. Okay, so what are the UV coordinates going to be for our little square? Well, they're actually, uh, they're actually very similar to the um, verts themselves, just in a slightly different space. So for a square orientated to that coordinate system, we're going to use zero. We always start at a zero for the top left corner. Sort of, it's sort of a convention. So for the next corner, we use zero and one. The corner after that uses 1, 1. That's the bottom right hand corner. And by process of elimination, the last corner must use 1, 0 because each one needs to be unique. So that should give us what we want. Now all we need to do is to actually declare an, a normal stream. So that's very easy. We're just very similar to the verts. Just declare it like that. So the UV coordinates are in texture space and there's a texture transform as well, but we're not going to go into that here. But anyway, let's do this. Um, so we're going to do a very similar thing. So the current vert is not what we want. What we actually want is the current UV pair. So that's in addition to the current vert. That's a different type. So M stream quad, M stream vert. No, that's the wrong one. M stream uvs so similarly and we can just assign the current uv from my quad uvs and same it's the same length this same length and the same index as the vertex so one uv pair matches one vertex so for instance the third vertex will use the third uv pair so they, they're matched up and the streams will also align with each other so the streams are in lockstep when it comes to these we're not using stripping, so we don't have to do anything too fancy here. And last but not least, we just need to set the stream. So in stream UVs, we have to tell it how many there are. So it'll be num particles, same as the verts. So very, very similar. We'll just run that, give it a quick run and test. Oh, I think we forgot something. I'm just going to stop that. I think we forgot to clean up. Yeah, we forgot to clean that up and to set it up in the constructor. So we're, it's exactly the same as the vertex stream. Just leave it there. And just 
check the ordering here. Actually, the order is wrong. So it comes after the vertices. The only difference is the name and the type, so we can just cut and paste that one. Okay, I think that'll do nicely. Let's try that out. Okay, um, it's not really liking that. Um, so the error message we're getting is the UV stream still finds incorrect UV stream 4. GX only allows two streams. Um, I, I think, pretty sure I know what that is, what the problem is here. Um, if you look at the declaration of this set UV stream, it doesn't take a number of UVs like all the other ones do for some reason. Um, this is probably an architectural issue related to Marmalade. But anyway, it takes a stream ID and what we've done is gone and given it uh, a value of 4 because it's numparticles times 4 equals 1 times 4 is 4. So that's wrong. So what I think we actually need to do here is just not give it an index at all, a number of, number of UVs at all. Okay, so that's working fine. Uh, we don't have a texture on here yet, so we can't really see the impact of it. Oh, actually, that's not true because it is being textured. What's actually happening here is it's being assigned the texture from the uh, terrain bricks. So that was their texture that you saw there. I'm not really sure why. It only shows it when you get close up to the thing. It's going to be a bit of an issue. Um, there might be some problem there with the normal mapping or Z fighting. But we'll get back to that. Okay. We need to check our code quite carefully because we're leaking something here and it's starting to annoy me a little bit. Let's just have a look at all our allocations. So over here, we have five allocations and we've matched it up with five threes. Well, what I think is happening is that our particle isn't, our um, container isn't being cleaned up by the manager. So let's go and look at particle manager. When we do add particle container, we do new. Destroy particle container is not calling delete on that new object though. So that's where the leak is happening. So we're just going to delete the container there and that should get rid of our memory leak. Okay, so let's go back and let's do a little bit of texturing. Um, this is also very easy. Um, for now, what we're going to do is we're actually going to give the particle container a texture. So this is very difficult to initialize as a const object. So I am actually just going to move that these are all constants, yep, I'm actually just going to give it a texture here. So what we need is we need two things, we need a material and a texture. So they're very easy to do. First of all we need a, a CIW texture, that's the generic sort of texture object in Marmalade. I'm just going to call it in texture. Now um, my hope is that eventually this texture object can be placed into the um, particle manager and shared amongst multiple, multiple particle containers. Um, but we're just trying to get something running, so that's an optimization we can make later, and maybe we can use some sort of texture identifier or something, or an enum even would, would suffice to just specify which texture we want. But for now, we're just going to put it inside every container, and later on, we'll fix that up a little bit. So this is the texture that is applied to our particle system. And we're also going to need a material because all textures have to be used through materials and the material actually gives us a bunch of other things like um, alpha blending modes that we're also going to need. So that's why we need a material. So a material contains a texture. So this is the material that is applied to our particles and determines that determines our blend modes, etc. I'm not very good at typing tonight for some reason. There we go. Okay, so these guys need to be cons need to be initialized in the constructor after m num particles. So we're just going to set them to null to start with because we're going to do the allocation slightly later on. Uh, the next thing we need to know before we can start loading textures and creating materials and stuff is what is the texture. So the easiest way to represent that is just with a file name. Okay, so that's the file name of the texture. It's passed in just as a normal string, ordinary C string. Okay. Now. One thing we need to bear in mind is that not every single particle will have a texture. Um, it's not a 100% requirement, uh, it's not compulsory. So what I'm going to actually do is allow people not to have a texture and we're going to adapt to that. So I don't want to force people to use a texture because I think that would not be correct. 
so before we can add a particle we need to load up this texture and set the material up so creating texture is very easy now that I look at this again I think we can probably just make these consts because of the way that the uh, textures are actually initialized and loaded so they, they can actually be consts on second thoughts so move them in here so these are always just going to be a new CIW texture and new CIW material because they don't actually take any arguments in their constructors or any real arguments of value to us anyway um, I believe the texture can take another texture as a copy but we're not we don't care about that here so that is actually really nice because it means we can make them more const and once again we want to do it in reverse order so we're going to delete our texture and delete our material now C++ comes to our rescue here we actually want to check if we have a texture file name before we construct these possibly quite large objects so we're going to use a little ternary so how this works is if the user constructs a particle container and they don't specify a texture file name, so if they give us null, which is what the uh, default constructor allows them to do, so they don't necessarily have to specify that, it's optional, then are we going to initialize mTexture to a null value too, using the ternary? So it's going to say, if our texture file name is null, is not null, make a texture, because it means we're going to need to load one, otherwise just set the point as null. So we're going to do the same for our material, because there's no point in having... Oh, actually, now that I think about it, we could possibly use the material to set blend modes without having a texture. So that is also a valid case. Um, it would be a really weird looking particle, but you know, that's not outside the bounds of possibility. So we'll leave the material there for now. And what happens is when you call the operator that lean in C++ and the pointer is null, it has no effect. So that's a valid operation. It just does nothing. Um, there's actually a check for null inside operator that lead in all modern C, C compilers in their implementations of operator delete so you don't have to worry about it same goes for the array okay so now we've got some texture stuff going on let's load up that texture so uh, loading a texture is very easy easy so if our file name is not equal to null we can load it up so we load from file so this will technically be happening from our um, resources built into our um, s3e um, file but we'll that's not really too important and I've already got a little texture called light text of BMP which has an alpha channel and everything perfect for testing particles and we're actually going to ask the texture to upload itself into the GPU's memory too so that's all we need to do there and we also have to ask the material to set its texture to be the one that we just loaded up now we can initialize the material so for this test, we're just going to try and have a sort of a semi-translucent material. So in order to do that, we're going to use the materials alpha mode. So this later on will be customizable by the person who creates the particle effect. And we're going to use just add. So add just sort of brightens up the back buffer whenever something gets drawn onto it. Um, you'll sort of get an idea of what the effect does when we start running. And I'll show you different sort of blend modes and stuff. But this is just a really good one to start and it's easy to see that's probably the most important so we, we know that it will actually work and we're just going to set an effect preset which is a very handy little feature of marmalade it, it bundles up a bunch of different render state for you so you don't have to set six different things just to get a quick blend going on okay and that should do the trick and now we've already got our uvs being applied so that's good now all we need to do is set the texture so we just say iwgx set material and M material and the texture will automatically be applied we have UVs we don't have normals because we're not really too interested in lighting our primitives so let's give it a quick go and it's not textured oh. okay that's a little bit disappointing but I'm sure we'll get to the bottom of it in the next tutorial because we've run out of time for this one so stick around and we'll fix that up and we'll get our texture on there thanks for watching